Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome back to my channel. I always say this, but I'm really excited for this video. Um, Claire's Crafty Corner has been doing a series of videos where she's been using the water drop technique in resin. And it's a technique, I believe, um, that was kind of devised by tea and art. And basically the last video of Claire's that I saw, she made a trinket tray that was kind of nebula, galaxy inspired, but with the water drop effect in it. I watched that video and straight away went onto Amazon, ordered some trinket tray moulds <clears throat> and I ordered a cat apparently because one has appeared on my desk. I also ordered a UV lamp and some UV resin. UV resin is just not something I've kind of done before or really had any desire to do before. It looked handy, but I wasn't really that bothered about it. But I saw this technique and I was instantly like, I have to try this. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video. So I'm going to try to recreate the, the Nebula inspired trinket tray. Um, I will try to kind of make it my own. I'm not going to try and do a carbon copy of Claire's. Um, so I'll take you through step by step how I do that. So I hope it turns out as beautifully as Claire's did because it is just so beautiful and I can see so much um, kind of potential for this technique for, for other themes that you could do with it. So I, I think it's going to be awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have never used these moulds before. I'm going to pour some rice into them and measure the volume to just give me a rough idea of how big they are. I want to start off just with one tray because I don't want to use a ton of materials if I haven't quite got the technique down yet. So I'm going to try to make enough resin just for one trinket tray. So I'll put the rice in here, measure the volume of that rice and it'll be a rough idea. And I'll always mix up a bit extra and chuck it into the pendant moulds if necessary. And yeah, chuck a cat into the pendant mold as well, because apparently this is the most exciting technique ever, isn't it, Evie Bean? Ridiculously needy cat. So yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. So step one is to put some blobs of UV resin onto the trinket tray and then use the UV lamp to cure those. Um, I've read the instructions on this UV resin and I'm a bit confused because it seems to think that a, a higher wattage lamp takes longer to cure. So I'm just going to have to play it by ear and just run it as many times as I need to until I think that it's um, set. And when Claire did this, some of her bubbles actually had air bubbles within them. The blobs had air bubbles within them. And I actually really liked that. So if I get air bubbles within the UV resin, I'm not going to be at all bothered by that. Um, I would welcome it, in fact. Um, I will try to not have air bubbles in. But if I do get them, I'm not going to fret too much. So as always with resin, I'm going to wear my PPE, I'm going to have my apron, my goggles and my gloves and a respirator. Um, I believe UV resin is even more smelly than ordinary resin, so I'm not going to take any chances with my lungs. Um, so that's step one. So I'll get my PPE on and get started. So here you can see me putting the blobs of UV resin down. This is the first ever UV resin that I've bought and it's way more fluid than I think would be best for this technique. So I was really struggling to get the water droplets to stay circular, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, but what I did is got some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud and I just tried to clean up the edges as best I could on all of those and clean up any spills that happened as a result as well. So I just put a few of those around um, just trying to make them not symmetrical, which is something I really struggle with. I always end up making stuff symmetrical. So <laughs> once that was done, popped them under the UV lamp and I did um, some blasts of two blasts of 90 seconds. Next up, I'm using four of my favourite chameleon powders from my Let's Resin Chameleon Powder set. Um, magenta, Grape, Galaxy and the Blue, I think that was. And I've also got some silver and gold foil as well. 
which I haven't actually used yet. It's the first time I've used it. So I'm just popping some little pieces, just torn up some tiny little pieces of the gold and the silver foil and just popping those down. I did go over them with my finger and just kind of pushed over them with the brush a little bit as well, just to make sure that they were sitting flat and would get picked up by the resin. And once I'd done that anywhere that there was anything I needed to clean up, I just went in with some sellotape and just cleaned up where I didn't want it. So whenever I kind of stepped back, just had a look and saw, see what else I wanted to put down there, whether it needed more foil or less foil or more of the silver. And I remembered that I hadn't put anything down in the rim of the tray, so I wanted to put a few bits down there as well. Next up, chameleon powder. So I wanted to dust um, around the foil pieces, but also dust around the UV resin blobs. And with the colour shifting powder, the dome of that resin means that it gives the, the blob a lot of three dimensional kind of effect when you look at it from the other side. Um, so it worked better with the colour shift that actually has more colour shift. The blue doesn't have a massive amount of colour shift but the other colours do. So I tried to do this kind of in random blobs a bit like a nebula would be so it doesn't look like a realistic nebula. There's another technique I've since seen on Claire's channel that would mimic that but I wanted to just put some coloured blobs around um, so that the black resin would make those stand out but just being really mindful that I didn't want to cover this with colour I wanted it to be predominantly black in the background so I was really trying to rein myself in here just make sure I had all four colours down but without overkill um, with the with the resin uh, with the let's resin powders So I was making sure as well that I was getting some of the, the colour down in the rim so the, the, the lip of the tray wasn't just plain black. Next up, some really chunky, um, it's gold glitter, but it's like little round particles of glitter rather than square ones. So they really do look like little seas of stars. So I was just picking those up on the brush and just tapping them, tapping the brush, dabbing it, whatever, just to get them around, but not too many. Then I mixed up my Let's Resin, um, epoxy resin, and added the Vista liquid black pigment. So I measured the mould um, when I used the rice and it came out at approximately 150 millilitres. So that's how much resin I made up and it ended up being absolutely perfect. It was the most perfect amount of resin to fill the mould. So before I'd filled it up, I did go around the edge with my um, silicone spatula just to dislodge any potential air bubbles that were there. I hit that with a flame just to get rid of any air bubbles that had risen to the surface, then left it overnight. Hi guys, it's the following day. It's not quite been 24 hours, but this is feeling firm enough to demold and I can't wait. I'm too excited to wait any longer. So oh, I am so excited to see if this worked. Try to be gentle with this because it's not fully cured just yet. Okay, are we ready? Oh, oh my god! Oh, that's incredible! Oh my god, this is amazing! Let me bring you down to look at this close up. Look! Oh my goodness, that is stunning! Yes, my water droplets are not round. I need some higher viscosity resin for that, I think. But as I said in the introduction, these little bubbles don't worry me. I think they add a little bit of extra interest. So I wasn't trying to get rid of those bubbles when I saw them. 
Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> These chameleon powders are just awesome in those bubbles um, because you can see the colour shift in them. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Thank you so much, Claire, for introducing me to this technique and, of course, to TNR for inventing the technique in the first place. This is insanely beautiful. I did get some of the colour in the rim. I tried to. Oh my God, I can't believe this. Oh, the colours. I can't, I just can't stop looking at it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so here it is with some jewellery on. Just, it's so beautiful. It's so, so perfect for my astronomy themed jewellery. If I was to put all of my astronomy themed jewellery on here, I'd need about 10 trays, but <laughs> these are the ones that I wear the most at the moment. Uh, oh, it's just so beautiful. It's not perfect. My um, UV resin blobs are not perfectly spherical, but I'm okay with that. This is a first attempt and I think it's gorgeous. Thanks to my dad, I have these chameleon powders. Um, so he gave me some money for my birthday, so I treated myself and they are stunning they are so beautiful against the black background oh, I can see this technique getting addictive <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one bye You're very beautiful, but you're also a pest. You are. You are such a pest.